Good morning. Uh, I want to welcome you to uh, devotion for uh, Lent. I believe this is Lent day six, uh, devotion number five. Uh, we're looking at um, the, the life of Jesus. Uh, we're starting at the beginning and going through and um, uh, looking at the stories and what Jesus does and says and um, and looking at them at a little different lens of how do they speak to us about what it means for us to become more Christ-like? Uh, that that is really what the focus of our faith is supposed to be. It's not about uh, whether or not uh, we are a, a better uh, or worse Christian, but about whether we are more uh, like Christ or not like Christ. And so um, uh, that's kind of where we're going with all of this. Uh, yesterday, uh, we read from uh, John's, John's Gospel, chapter 3. Uh, it is uh, Jesus' um, encounter with the Pharisees, Nic Pharisee Nicodemus. Um, and, and interestingly enough, it's, uh, in case you hadn't noticed, it's at night. Uh, Nicodemus wasn't someone that was uh, willing to come to Jesus in the daylight because um, as a, as a Pharisee, he was a, a leader, and uh, he couldn't really be seen with Jesus. And so uh, he comes at night, um, and um, in this, we get this, this tug between the idea of um, being uh, born again and, and what that means uh, versus being... Um, in, Nic in Nicodemus's case, it's what's the difference between knowing the law and and God and and all the prophets and and all of those things versus being born again. Um, and I think that we we today in in especially in the mainline church, uh, I think we still struggle with this. Uh, I think that um, uh, you know Nicodemus comes and, and Nicodemus is is a super well educated person as a Pharisee. Uh, he has studied uh, the, the, the Jewish Hebrew scripture um, extensively. He knows the law uh, backwards and forwards. Uh, he knows God. Um, he, he knows he's part of the chosen people. Um, but um, uh, uh, he, he doesn't, he, he still struggles because he, he has a sense that that's not enough. And he comes to Jesus uh, asking about, you know, we know that you are a teacher uh, who has come from God, but, you know, um, for no one can do the things that you've done. And, and Jesus tells him that, that he has to be born again or born from above in order to see the kingdom of God. And, and um, I think in our case nowadays, I mean, we do still have that issue. I think that, um, you know, as, as a pastor, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm fairly well educated um, in terms of, of scripture and in terms of, you know, all the history and all the things that, that you learn in seminary. Um, and, and I know tons and tons of uh, religious scholars. Um, and I really question in many of their cases, or in, maybe in most of their cases, the idea that they're born again. Uh, I think, I think, especially in the mainline church, we probably have that that problem. Um, but I also think it's not just. I think it's you know we we think we want we'd like to think it's just those you know kind of people. But I think it's also people that are born in the church. You know, if you're born in the church, if you're raised in the church, if you're you've gone to church your whole life, um, you know, in many cases, it, it, it's that you know Jesus. I mean. You've you've heard all the stories. You maybe portrayed Jesus in some program. You you know you've done all kinds of Jesus stuff, and you've learned all kinds of Jesus stuff. But there's a difference between knowing Jesus in your head, and and being born again, and having Jesus in your heart, and and living uh, with Christ dwelling within you. Uh, we're going to sing a song on Sunday, uh, Christ in Me. Uh, and, and I think that that's, you know, kind of a part of that. And I think that that's a lot of what uh, uh, Jesus is talking about to Nicodemus is that, um, 
you know, that, that the way that you're born or, or the way you're raised, all of that, all of that stuff um, uh, is, is stuff of this world. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's whether, whether it's in the church or not in the church, it's still pretty much stuff of this world. Um, it's, it's, it's um, stuff of the flesh. That's the term that's used. And, and in, by that, I don't mean that it's bad, but it's, it's this, this world. But there is, but Jesus exists in another plane, in a spiritual plane. And, and to, to um, have Jesus in your life, there is a point at which you have to uh, let that, that earthly, fleshly part die off. And you have to be, exist in this spiritual, uh, with Christ in you, in this spiritual plane. And that's that born again experience. Uh, and, and, uh, it worries me that we 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 have people in our church. I mean, maybe some of you watching this, and and um, you know we're we are very uh, churchy, uh, but we're not very Jesusy. We're not, and that's kind of what we're talking about here: is how can we get away from uh, the ch uh, or not not away from that sounds wrong, uh, but how can we go deeper than the church? How can we go beyond much beyond the stuff of this world? into a stuff that is spiritual and his stuff is is jesus and a stuff that makes us uh move more and more towards being like christ uh, and that is being born again um and uh and then and then jesus taught or uh yeah he talks about um if you're if you are someone that is all uh about um this world you know that that if if that's if that's where your focus is, um, you're not going to ever hear the spiritual stuff. Um, that that um, you have to be able to to put that uh, worldly stuff aside, uh, and you have to be able to to um, you have to be able to get beyond that uh, because because if you don't get beyond that, you're never going to really understand. You have to, you have to have, and, and, and to some extent, it is like a being born again experience. And then, of course, we get to to John three sixteen, and the idea that um, that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, uh, and and that's important. But I think even more important is that everyone who believes in Him may not perish but have eternal life. And, 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 and I think that that means that, that even if you don't, um, if you're not completely born again, uh, you know, there's, there's this contrast between being born again and believing. And, 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 and can you believe and not be born again? And I'll be honest, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know the answer, but I know the text says that if you believe, uh, you won't perish. You'll have eternal life. Uh, so I don't know. Um, but I do know that... Um, and, and this is maybe the part that's most important for us is how we can be more Christ-like is where it says that, that Jesus doesn't come into the world to condemn, but in order to save. Um, I think so many times we as Christians are very much like the Pharisees. We're very hung up on the rules. We're very hung up on what you have to do to be a Christian uh, the way we think of as being a Christian. And I don't think that that's what Jesus uh, that's that that is not being Christ-like. Um, Jesus doesn't come into the world to, con to condemn. In fact, um, if, if we skipped it, but if you went back um, in, uh, where I thought it was, oh, maybe it's it's our, it's later on. But but we get the story of, of Jesus and the woman taken in adultery, and he's not about condemning; he's about saving. Uh, and and I think for us, we need to get judgment. And condemnation out of our lives because that's not that's not what it means to be uh, Christ-like. We need to be someone that can um, that can that sees other people with the eyes of Christ, and we see them with love, and we don't see them with condemnation. Um, so that that's that's what I got from from this one, and hopefully maybe you got some other things as well. But uh, that's what I got. Um, before we start our, our scripture for today, um, let's let's pray. Most holy God, we do thank you for this glorious day you've given to us. Every day is a gift from you. Thank you for uh, your holy scripture. 
uh, thank you, you for your reminder of what we need to be uh, working on to be more Christ-like. Um, help, us, help us to be someone that can move beyond the flesh to be born again. Help us to be people that can put aside condemnation uh, to be loving and, and accepting as Christ is. Uh, pray, oh God, that you'll be with us now as we study uh, your holy word and as we uh, read about the one that is the word, uh, that you might open our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit uh, and speak to us this very day. It's in Christ's name. Amen. In chapter four of John, um, Jesus has an encounter uh, with uh, the woman at the well. Um, and, and I'm not going to, I don't know that I'm going to read uh, the whole thing because it's a fairly lengthy uh, text. Uh, but we know that he, his, he's, he's on his way to Galilee and uh, he, and his, he decides to take his disciples uh, through Samaria. Uh, and they come. Uh, to the place where Jacob's well is, and, and it's time to stop and get something to eat, and, and the disciples are going to go head into town. Jesus stays out by the well, and the woman comes to, to, uh, to draw water, and she comes, um, you know, in the, in the middle of the day, uh, which is, is unusual, um, and, and Jesus begins to talk to her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading in verse 7. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? And then the writer tells us that Jews don't have anything in common or anything to do with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get this living water? Uh, and then she asked him about the ancestors of Jacob, and, and he says, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become uh, will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to come to keep coming here to draw water. And, and Jesus then tells her to go to get her husband. And she says, no, that she hasn't, she doesn't have a husband. And he says, you're right. I know you've had five husbands and the guy you're with now, he's not your husband. So what you said is true. And then the woman kind of makes a, 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 a statement about him and about uh, what it means. The woman said to him, sir, this is 19. The woman said to him, sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on, these, on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah, or I would say the Messiah, is coming, and we get a translation of that as called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to him, to her, I am he, the one you, who you, the, uh, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Now, I have a little footnote on mine there where it says he, and actually in the Greek, which is the original language, it simply says I am. Uh, and we know that I am is, is for the Jews a name for God. And uh, so Jesus is, is speaking to this woman. Um, I want you to think about this encounter as you, uh, after you go back and reread it in your own, in your own Bible and, and pray about it and, and uh, uh, let it, let it kind of percolate and, and uh, go in your, in your brain and in your imagination and in your soul. Um, think about this living water. Uh, what does living water mean for us as people who want to become uh, more like Christ? Um, 
you know, the woman obviously doesn't understand it spiritually. Uh, she still thinks he's talking about that, that uh, he'll give her like a spring of water at her house or something so that she doesn't have to um, come here. Um, she sees it some way spiritual, but some ways not. Um, then, then there's this whole issue of worship, uh, and and um, what is what is what it is what does it mean to be worshiping in spirit and truth? Um, think about that, and then think about. Um, uh, I mean, maybe the Messiah thing is something we don't need to think about that much because you know we're sort of already beyond that. But but I think definitely thinking about I think in this in this case uh, thinking about. Um, the living water, and then the idea of, of worshiping in spirit and truth. Think about those two things, um, and and I'll kind of give you my thoughts on those when I when I uh, do a thing tomorrow, do my devotion tomorrow. So uh, I pray that you go in peace, uh, have a tremendous day, um, work on being, not 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 uh, not knowing Christ, not um, knowing about Christ. Work on being more like Christ in everything you do today. Uh, I just pray that you you uh, be at work in that, that that might be your uh, focus each and every day. Amen.